What's up, gamers? Welcome back to another Sojourner Light -like commentary. Today, we're going to be talking over a loss. I'm just going to let you know right away, we lose this match, and it's not in very many rounds. We lose it in five. It's a pretty quick match overall. But the reason why I really wanted to showcase this game is because it is easily the most tragic game of Rainbow Six that I have played, and I think it really highlights just how much of rank 2.0 is a joke. I don't deserve to be in platinum rank. I'm currently platinum 3, and I do not deserve to be here because I've gotten here with a slightly negative KD, and uh, overall just not playing to my greatest ability. I definitely think that I have a lot to improve in terms of my aim and everything. Um, so that's what I'm prefacing this video with, just to let y'all know, tamper your expectations a bit, as it were. So round one, we're not going to be playing the Zero. We're actually going to be playing the Sledge here. You'll see me switch in a second. Initially, the reason why I was thinking of playing Zero was because I wanted to open up this wall here uh, on the garage and then have a Zero Cam shoot up onto the top of CCTV wall and get one of those Bandit batteries. Just, I like trying new things whenever I play Rainbow Six, but I decide that it's probably going to be a little bit easier for me to go ahead and play the Sledge because the Sledge, I noticed that they don't have these reinforced yet. In fact, they're reinforcing them right now. So you'll see me sprint over here in order to uh, get this person off the uh, the wall. Oh, my skin's still loading in. Um, but yeah, here I am sprinting in. Oh, and there's my hall. So I try to like pre-fire the wall. We see that it's soft. Buck goes and opens it here. Um, and I know that based off of the fact that they were just reinforcing this, and because we were pretty much, you know, within the first 15 seconds, able to get this wall open, I was assuming that uh, this warden was probably, like, still downstairs. I didn't know it was a warden or anything. I just figured, you know, there'd be a player downstairs behind this corner or anything. Um, I know that there's this Azami upstairs because we'd seen the Kiba barriers, and that's the reason why I brought Sledge, was because I was thinking we open up Garage, we throw nades at the, at the Azami, and we'll be doing quite well for ourselves. Also been finding that I've been playing a lot of... Now, I, I, I see something here, like, on the motorcycle. I think that this is his head behind the motorcycle here. But he's actually sitting back here, like the psychopath. He is takes a little bit of damage from the breed, takes a little bit of damage from the door. Yana tries to throw a nade, but I think it goes missing here. And look at this fucking pixel angle, dude. This is just tragic. And he's playing Warden, so... Headshots me. Sees me first. Sees the buck there as well. Look at this movement, by the way. This is, like, my movement. Sees the buck as well. Who doesn't know the player. Gets the Yana who peeks in and then doesn't get the kill. So on 20 HP, he's like, you know what? I got three kills from sitting behind the motorcycle. I'm going to go back on the site. So, really, like... A mismanagement of resources of drones and everything because we still have a lot of drones and everything available for ourselves uh, to kill that warden at the end of the game now he's back got this Raptors control and basically everything that we had tried to set up within the first minute by the way the first minute of the round in a minute there are already five people dead half the servers gone it, it, this is just insanely fast. This is also going into a tangent about what I hate about Rainbow Six right now is that, especially as you go higher up in the, the ELO ladder, you are rewarded less and less for actually playing gadgets, for playing the game the way that it's been designed. One of the things that I really liked about Rainbow Six when I first started playing the game was the fact that you had all these unique operators with gadgets. It was like Overwatch meets CSGO kind of thing. Um, because I like my FPSs, I liked Overwatch back when it wasn't, you know, overly apparent that Blizzard's a terrible company. Um, but point being that I wanted something to fill that gap, and that's where Rainbow Six comes in for me. I still enjoyed this game quite a bit, but man, did this game make me feel upset. Uh, Yana, or IQ, finds the Rat Warden hiding in the corner. Drone him out, narrowly misses seeing the bandit there, but doesn't react, doesn't try to retake the gunfight, which I think is smart, honestly, because if you're trying to retake the gunfight like this ace is here, misses the goo mine like three times, there we go, but if you try to re-engage this gunfight like this ace will and die in a second, never mind, he doesn't die yet, um, you're going to end up losing quite a bit to defenders who are just positioned better than you. Seth Throwin <laughs> is a great name. Our IQ does really well this game. Um, I feel bad for them that I happen to be on their team. Anyway, there goes Ace. Ace is down. I told them top red. 
They try to get this angle, and then they go down. I think we have a drone as well that I'm watching uh, somewhere. I think it's this one? Yeah, it's that one there that I'm watching. Can I go down a floor? No, not really. Yeah, that's kind of strange. Yeah, that's super unfortunate, right? So our IQ is on basically no HP, and they died to, to a goo mine there. Um, I heard the bandit downstairs in Lounge, so I figured they would be safe to plant the bomb and everything, but ran to a goo mine. Now, what operator was game time playing here? Oh, that looks like the IQ. Gee, it sure it sure would have been convenient if there was still time. <laughs> if there was still time left in the round. Yeah, it sure would be a shame if there was still an entire minute left in the round. They know where the bandit is. They know that they've been playing a lesion. Surely, surely IQ would have been able to, you know, use a gadget to figure out where this goo mine is. It's like, golly day, people. This infuriates me so much. You're going to run into it right there under the window and perish to the damage. Look at the little freeze frame action of the, <laughs> the ragdoll there. It's so it's so genuinely frustrating at this ELO for me to play Rainbow Six, but I can't play this version of Rainbow Six anywhere else because standard mode has maps that honestly, like, I don't know, not that great in the map pool. Um, and also they don't have, they're not, it's not like unranked anymore. I like the ranked playlist. I like the ranked play style. Um, the number of rounds and everything is something that I've grown very accustomed to. And so to make it just, casual but with extra filler it feels very wrong to me i don't know not a big fan at all of the new standard uh system all right so droning out uh i'm going on and looking at other people's drones i don't want to lose mine because you know dokabi loses theirs and i see a ping come out and i figure that's low enough to the ground and then i see the lesion reinforcing the hatch as well so i know that they're playing basement i take the hibana um, we ban Kaid as well as you can see in the top of the screen there. And Thatcher. I don't know why we did that to ourselves, but we ban Kaid and Thatcher. And um, I think, okay, cool. That's awesome. It's like prime opportunity for me to play Hibana here because Hibana is really good on Clubhouse. Another operator that's actually kind of decent on Clubhouse, especially on this basement attack, is Ram because you can just throw the, the boogie drones into kitchen and get things open for free there i don't know why it looked that way I, I was looking over there like there was a camera there um but obviously not one there um so i know that there's no reinforcements here you have to use the eight to get people through i believe there it might be six i don't know if he like lean or something but anyway so i get dirt open 30 seconds into the round still has a drone in pocket uh we've only lost one two three drones still has a drone in pocket is playing yana dies to this guy in garage like doesn't even get a shot back 30 seconds into the round this is unacceptable like completely unacceptable play uh dokabi sees the warden thankfully downs him doesn't recognize that that extremely loud gra glass breaking sound is the sound of downing someone so maybe she does gets the guy anyway so we trade him back but that's still under a minute and then rook comes up secret stairs and and kills the dokebi uh under a minute <laughs> again it's uh, it's been under a minute it's been 45 seconds and three people are already dead like, i'm not expecting y'all to play it like pro league but I'm expecting you to respect your opponents a little more than this. Because going down into a 2v2 with two minutes remaining in the round is is ridiculous. I, I don't know how else to put it. We have five drones left in our pockets. Which means that there's one more drone. I think it was the Yana's drone that wasn't used. But again, Yana's dead. Um, they play Echo every single round, and we bring IQ for it. I'm like, okay, well, now i got to see if there's anybody inside a kitchen. I see everything's double reinforced. I know that we're safe because we got the guy that was lounged, and the guy died from secret. So I go ahead and I, you know, throw throw my little, uh, my Hibana charges here. They try to impact trick it, but they miss entirely because I've just put the pellets on the center. 
of the hatch there. Um, I believe I believe that's open now. Should be, yeah. So Hibana, open that up. Go down to two because you only need two to open up anything that can be breached with hot uh, with soft breaches. I also have breach charges. I'm gonna do something really stupid here, just out of pure frustration. You'll see it later in the round. I'll, I'll point it out. It's very obvious what I do. That just is like Kai is very frustrated. And there is the IQ sprinting into God knows where, into red stairs with a minute and a half remaining to an echo that's roaming. I mean, this is not a play that you can really fully expect, right? But um, dies to the echo just sitting upstairs on red stairs, still has a minute and a half, still had two drones in pocket. Like, so now it's just with a minute, a whole half of a round remaining, it's up to me and Buck to get the rest of this round done like oh my holy days i i think i hear somebody in blue i get like the alibi here um mostly the thing that i hear is this uh legion legion goodness gracious i've been playing dead by daylight you have to forgive me for saying legion and legion i know I, even in the last dead by daylight video i said legion and i said oh i'm playing this rainbow six what a, what a great little crossover event there um but I know that if I jump into blue, I'm dead. But I also know that Buck's down in blue. There's a minute 13 left in the round. Uh, it's a 2v4. They're locked down on basement. I should. What I should have done here is gone around to uh, Moto Hatch. Actually, I didn't have enough charges left. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have opened dirt at the start of the round. Maybe I should know how to use... I should have used bre a breach charge on the blue hatch there instead of my hip on charges. Whatever the reason. But either way... This this should have been opened and then had another angle of attack for ourselves. Because I don't think that with the setup that they have down here in blue, um, uh, if I do this, I can get a better cam. But with the setup that they have in blue, so they're triple reinforced here. I don't have any hit battle pellets left, and they have a nice line of sight here that Legion's watching. They have this where Alibi's watching the hatch for anybody who's coming down there, and they have Rook watching main stairs. So they have all their bases covered, and by far the strongest stronghold for them is here because they have Legion traps, they have they have this wall barricaded, they have this line of sight here that we can't really contend because they could be sitting on any of the armory boxes or even behind uh, rifles here and looking back into blue. So what do I do? I make the dumbest decision of my fucking life. And I'm like, you know what? I'm so mad about this wall. I'm going to go put a breeze charge on it. Not even realizing that Legion, Legion's just right there anyway. And it just kills me through the wall. Um, and we do trade him back, I guess. But it's really to no avail. We can look at what Buck's doing here. And it's not really all that pretty. You can see Buck standing behind Generator. Tries to throw a flashbang. Now, another thing that frustrated me immensely about playing with this Buck... Is that I like playing Buck because you have the Golden Six and you have Hard Breach Charges and you have the um, Skeleton Key. So you have Soft Breach, you have Hard Breach, and you have an Explosive in order to deal with Utility. This Buck went flashbangs with the pistol every single round, taking this completely selfish operator or, or approach to it. He sees the Rook Cross there, but I mean, they honestly, all, they all know he's there. This uh, Echo Drone stunning him the hell out. Um... And, yeah, it just gets peaked by the alibi at the end of the round. So now we're down 0-2. I'm not playing this well at all. And I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm honestly very miffed this game. Because last game, I also had a game that went to maximum overtime. Uh, it was on Border. I hate Border. I get it every, like, one out of every four matches that I've played this season has been on Border. And I am... I hate that map with a passion. I don't know why people refuse to ban it and instead think that Nighthaven Labs and Plains are more worthy of bans, and Emerald Plains are more worthy of bans when Border is a much larger issue. It is a terrible map. Please ban Border. I hate that map. I hate seeing it in Pro League. I hate playing it myself. I hate it. It's The reason why I hate it is because it is another... Uh, map that just enables people to play TDM. It's so small that you're just, oh, I'm going to run around and run and gun, and I'm just going to not even attempt to play this in an interesting way. But what do I know? I'm not good at the game, so I'm just kind of yelling at clouds here. It's just how I feel about things. Um, playing the Thermite, because I know that they're going gym bedroom, and I... <sighs> yep, 
that's all I have really to say about that. I know that they're going to gym and bedroom. So look, we have nine drones, two MP impacts. I also always like slow peek this door because I'm worried about someone spawn peeking me on lounge. I've only had it happen maybe once this season and it didn't work anyway. Um, but still something that I always just like to watch out for because if there's any locations that can be spawn peeked, they probably will be spawn peeked. So I go up here for the thermite. Da -da 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 -da. Let's get this off. They impact, the EMP impact the wall, thank you. Open that main wall. Uh, I, I start sprinting over this way and then I drop the diffuser closer to my teammates in case they do manage to get in the site. But I've, I've, um, how would I put it? I have made it an effort to open this window on red because I sometimes I catch people on rotates here and I don't know how homie dies uh again to this warden inside of garage <laughs> who gets traded back by iq this time thankfully but i'm going back for the construction wall here it's strange that you can't like shift over i think it's because of that break in the in the roof there but that's why i have to do this this way get the breach on the wall pop this open i don't even know that the rook is in there wherever he is yeah I mean, he knows about that wall being open. What a terrible tight angle oh, that he had there. That was, wow, that was nasty. Nasty little pixel angle onto the Osa. Who dies on the gym window? Like, I don't know why Osa isn't contending Jacuzzi Balk. <laughs> Just more and more things that I'm, I'm very confused by um, overall. So, I don't know why, like, you wouldn't go over to where Yana is here and try to contend Jacuzzi Balk. This is a very strange idea to me. Like, Osa being able to put a shield down here and contending players inside a bathroom and or gym, or, like, put even putting a shield here or putting a shield to then cut off this rotate coming out of bedroom, also because they have it castle barricaded off on Logi, um... An Osa shield played here would be way better, but instead Osa just dies to someone peeking her on um, on on gym window, and she uses a shield to face towards the con window so she can what crouch by this window and, and bait players here. I don't know. It's a very strange use of utility. Also, I'm not proud of myself here. I throw a, a drone up onto uh, red stairs, try to look for players inside. No, nothing in gym. I call this out. Uh, but there is one in bathroom, and I see the lesion here. Shoots my drone. Like, okay, so maybe he'll be rotating. Rook actually rotates down red stairs right as I pass here, and he doesn't know that I'm outside of this, which is kind of funny. I don't even know where Rook's going. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Why are you going there? Are you just, like, trying to pre-fire me at the bottom of red st That's very strange. I mean, he's, he probably saw the drone come through. Um... But I'm trying to get an angle here onto the player in bathroom, but I'm wasting so much time doing this. I should have gone for my construction rotate and tried to push my way in through a uh, bedroom there, because I only saw the lesion in the rook on site, so I just kind of figured, like, oh, maybe they're still there. I hear this lesion in here. I'm trying to, like, hold the angle. Uh, and I'm wasting so much time. Like, I've, I've been sitting here for 20 seconds. The round timer is winding down. Uh, but we're also playing IQ again. What's that right above IQ? Hmm. Oh, that's an Echo Drone. IQ, why don't you use your gadget? Because it's going to be very important in about 20 seconds. Great shot by her there. And I also catch the uh, the Rook rotating, uh, like, top red there. So I'm like, okay, sweet. I have to smoke off. Because I didn't know what player they killed. I have to smoke off the bathroom rotate just in case. And she gets hit by another goo mine. And instead of taking it out, she goes down to it. To a second hit. And I have to plant. Because look at the time. 6.9 seconds on the timer. 7 seconds left in the round. IQ, you have a gadget that scans for electronics. Which you had 20 seconds to do so. You didn't see the echo drones. I just hope that he didn't have a second charge there. And I, I like, 
shoot her in the chest out of frustration. Like, you're playing IQ. Please use your gadget. It would have saved us the round <laughs> in that scenario. Oh my goodness. So we're 0-3 going into defenses. And it's honestly, like, not a bad spot to be when it comes to um, Clubhouse. Because when you're playing clubhouse uh clubhouse has definitely always been a historically more defender side of map right uh, the angles which attackers have to go through are pretty arduous overall and we why is why is the what on earth is happening here why am i under the map uh okay so get these rotates done get, yep I mean, you see, I'm playing the ACS. I'm a little sad that the people use their impacts for that, but, you know, open up construction wall. And I see that we're going to reinforce that, so I'm like, okay, cool, I have to do what... Well, I'm going to open this hatch as well, just for the hell of it. But I, I decided to go ahead and do what Zami does best on this site, and that is um, put the Zami barriers up. Now, we have... We have two operators here that require zero setup time. And none of them, neither of them, reinforce garage walls. So I, I shouldn't be setting up my Azami barriers here because this is such a liability in terms of a position to hold. Because as soon as they open up this garage wall, you have a nice line of sight onto both this rotate here going into sight, which this shouldn't be a rotate, and the window going back into CCTV. We have a warden who takes no setup time that could have used any of the five remaining reinforcements we had to get that wall. Um, and we have a Solus who also could have helped reinforce that wall. But instead, both of these Chuckle Fox are, are spawn peeking. Your spawn peeking warehouse and, and construction site, or um, shipping dock, excuse me, not, not construction site, shipping dock. I'm going to put on my zombie barricades, my... Site. My attachments are detached from my gun today. They have decided to walk out ahead of me this time. Although they do get quite a bit of damage onto the... Um, onto the Amaru there. They are aware of the spawn peak. Good lord, Rainbow Six is a working video game. Holy smokes. Well, he's actually just playing Iron Sights. Never mind. What a chad. The AK-12 Iron Sights. This is a... Definitely an angle that Maverick is holding right now. I don't know, who is that? Uh, anyway, they're mapping open the wall, but Bandit cleverly gets them through the wall, so that works out pretty well. I, I foolishly decide that, yes, uh, Garage is still a good place to hold, even though my walls down below aren't being reinforced. I try to impact trick these um, Ace Selmas. I, I throw a second impact there because I'm worried that my first one didn't actually connect because I didn't get the Selma destroyed uh, points for it. So anyway, walls getting opened. I decide to like peek over towards construction side because I'm worried with how quiet it's been that they're going to be pushing that side. And Bandit dies to Yana in lounge, so they know they know of me being up there. I get native from below and I freak out, so I'm like, okay, well, I gotta move. I gotta leave. I have to break free, pop open the wall a little more, have this wonderful angle. I'm looking through a 1.5 site there, by the way. It just won't show up. Because again, it is a working video game that we have here. I'm expecting people to still be out on that wall. I hear I hear walking as well, but I think that I always I keep thinking that it's the people outside, but it's actually this buck that's down below me. Um, so this goes down. Two and four. So we're three to three. Minute ten left in the round, so not quite as bad of a location to be. We're slowing these rounds down quite a bit. And that's what I'm happy with, right? Um, I'm playing down here. Buck is still trying to shoot through the floor to get these players. And... Echo gets him through the floor anyway, so that's played really well. And I hear I hear this Yana walking, um, funny enough. I hear her right here. So you can see that I like turn this way, because I hear her sprinting up here. Um, and I catch her on the door. Good night. I don't know where the second guy is. They have a drone. They could have droned me out, but they won't. 
So I had to look back towards the main wall, but I hear him shifting around here. I'm like, oh, okay. So I will hide behind this green box here where they have no idea where I actually am. And he wide swings. I, I like openly exclaim, why would you wide swing that? I don't hit him once either, which is wild to me, but okay. So we know he's in construction. Pretty easy angle for us to hold. And uh, this will be over soon. So we finally get one on the round. But remember, this is a five round game of us just not using utility whatsoever. And this last round, ladies and gentlemen, is a travesty in multiple parts. It will be falling apart from the very start of the round with this round setup. Again, a couple of operators that, three operators that do not require a lot of setup. We have the Warden, who requires zero setup. We have the Thorn, who requires basically zero setup. You just have to put down the deployable shield and then Thorn gadgets in locations you think they'll enter in. And you have the Solus, who also requires basically zero setup. Ooh, I'm, I'm like super extended there. I don't know who that is. Um, but yeah, do the typical, like open up the rotates on blue and on uh, church walls and armory and all that, you know, doing like a really typical uh, blue setup here. But just a typical all around setup for, for a basement defense, having those rotates opened up. We reinforced the wrong wall here, by the way. Uh, you want to reinforce both of these walls here and open a head hole on that side and not the other way around. Because if you open up if you open up this wall, now if they get to the bottom of the stairs, once this is opened up, which I'll, I'll show you in a second once I open it up here, look at this line of sight that you have from bottom, uh, from bottom main. Like, oh my god, look at this. You can catch anybody coming out of blue. You can catch people coming out of memo. You can catch people hiding behind bench inside a church. But... If you open up that far side there, it cuts off this rotate for people coming out of Moto and Memo, and also doesn't give access to the people from main stairs, but I have to comply with what's, what's been reinforced. And you know what also hasn't been reinforced? We have five reinforcements remaining in the pocket here. We reinforced one, two walls, none of the other blue walls, one of these walls. We've gotten one hatch. Uh, let's see, one, two, on church, three... Four. And where am I going? I'm going to my death. Five. So we get the moto hatch. Blue hatch is like kind of neither here nor there. Um, but we we haven't like reinforced the other blue walls. Even, at least at least this right hand one here, because you can jump up onto the table here and open up a hole on top of that wall and have a funny little angle onto uh, that landing in, in secret stairs like here if i can go up no i can't go up darn uh but there we go so if you're on these stairs there's a, a line of sight that you can have uh off of this angle here that's pretty good but i'm like oh shit i need to actually go set up some stuff inside of dirt because what if they push dirt uh and i die here i'm just letting you know right now like okay maybe they're not pushing dirt right away and i try to reinforce the wall and i get blasted immediately because we didn't reinforce dirt. Why? I mean, they just get a free kill because I'm dumb for not for not getting the reinforcement done here, or for not um for not reinforcing this wall first or this wall first or whatever. Um, but also like trying to recontend this. But there are one, two, three players here who all recognize that we didn't reinforce dirt. And what are we playing with? We're playing with a Warden, a Thorn, and a Solus. Who could, any one of them, does not require setup. Any one of them could have gone to dirt and reinforced the dirt walls. But instead, I'm playing Smoke here, trying to be a good teammate. Trying to get our reinforcements down so that we have, or, or our rotates down, so that we have a rotate through blue like you normally do, and the rotate back in armory like you normally do, and this rotate at the bottom of main stairs like you normally do to cut off this rotate from moto. Like, any player sitting in back of armory then has this op opportunity of, like, uh, th this opportunity to get out of the back of sight or contend people on main or anything. Like, I am doing all of the setup here. And none of it has been done on the side of the warden. Like, of course it is dumb for me. I have made so many dumb decisions this game. But 
it is so incredibly frustrating for me to see these people just like, oh, I'm going to go spawn peek and stuff, and then they die at the start of the round within 15 seconds, they don't reinforce anything, and they haven't helped the team at all. Like, at least get one reinforcement down. <laughs> Holy smokes, I'm losing my mind. Also, Echo notices that we have the wrong uh, wall reinforced there. It'll get him killed eventually. Uh, but it's Dokebi. Because we didn't ban Dokebi, we banned Thatcher. Oh, I'm so heated about this. Uh, Thorin gets a kill, which is pretty nice. There, of the players pushing him through dirt and stuff. They know of the other players pushing through there. Uh, namely the Buck. But I want to watch this, uh, this Solus. Because this Solus, man. Opportunity to, to really win the round for us here, too. Uh, and it just, it goes pretty awry. There goes the Thorn. Oh, Buck pushes in, but Echo trades it back. Now check this out. So they have the intel, and they die immediately. <laughs> was, actually, that wasn't the player I was looking for. I was, I was actually looking for the Thorn. We gotta go back a little bit more. I'm so mad about this. Okay. So here, let's look at the thorn, right? We have this rotate from bottom main. Uh, we know that there are players pushing in from dirt. Look at this. So she looks at the hatch, which isn't open, gets the shot onto the Dokebi. Doesn't look look at where her, her sight is. You can see the buck is right here. You can see the buck. You can see him. You can see him. He's trying to look at you. You're so tunnel vision on the Dokebi that you can't see the buck at all. Um, and, then, and then we we already saw this guy die, but he just runs down secret. Yeah, Echo gets the trade back onto the buck, thank God. Um, but he tries to go back, and, and the, the Yana catches him, because the Yana's been able to get in through Oil Pit for free, because um, earlier in the round, what had happened was this Yana uh, came in through this window in CCTV. Or no, not the window. Where did she come in from? No, she actually just went in here and sprinted up and then just went straight for oil pit and dropped in. And uh, homeboy Solus was sitting in the bottom of a uh, lounge and went behind the wall to look for drones and stuff and completely missed the Yana rotating in through there. So a bit of an unfortunate timing thing, really. Um, but minutes gone, by the way. Only one minute has gone through in this round. Um, I die to my own stupidity and also partially reinforcements not being done by the right people um, and everything else falls apart from there so Echo hears the player in blue Thorn Gadget goes off and they hear the Dokebi planting hmm what, what, operator, what operator are you playing right now Echo? Or could you possibly be playing an operator that has a, a plant denial gadget? Could you possibly also be playing one of these plant denial gadgets that's sitting over here? In the corner of sight? Could you possibly be playing an intel gathering operator? Now you're completely disregarding... Like, look at this angle they take. So they, they heard the thorn gadget go off on this Yana that was inside of blue... And instead, they're like, oh, you know what? I gotta go stop the plant. I gotta go, I gotta disregard this player inside of blue and go peek for wherever the frickin' plant is. <laughs> instead, you have... <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so freaking heated about this. You guys have no idea. But instead, it's like, no. Let's disregard the player in blue. And let's just sprint into armory. Yeah, where are they, Echo? Do you would you possibly happen to have an operator that has a gadget that could be used for plant denial? <laughs> Just like, like I understand if there's the the argument of I'm scared of the player in blue. But you saw how Echo pushed out there. There was a point where they just decided, this player in blue doesn't matter to me. I need to go for the plant. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll use my amazing gun skills and sprint in there without any regard for the gadget that I have to deny the plant and hopefully prolong my life and then recontend the person on blue. 
No! <laughs> None of that happens! And look at the utility that, that the enemy team has. They still have all their flashbangs, all their nades, almost all of their Hibana pellets. Aside from one set, which they used to get the kitchen hatch open, but like... Oh my god. It's, it's headache games like this that not only make me hate Rainbow Six, but also make me hate the new Rank 2.0 system, because may I remind you, I am in Platinum right now. These are supposed to be Platinum ELO players making these kinds of mistakes. I don't deserve to be in Platinum, and none of these idiots do either. <laughs> oh man, I'm so... I'm... Oh, I am heated, I am toasty and angry. And uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Don't play like these people. These people made bad decisions from start to finish. And uh, see you all later. Bye-bye.